In this video, I'm going to look at the Oculus Rift controllers and just how to do hand tracking as well as the inputs. So all the buttons and the different axes and that kind of stuff. So we'll start out with just the hand tracking. So this is just making the objects in the game follow your controllers. So I'll just mute my mic real quick and I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, it just follows um, the controller around, whatever game object you parent to it, and it'll follow the rotation as well. So in this case, I've got a left and a right hand object, and just the camera all parented to one ultimate controller object. So on that object, I have a script uh, that just references the left and right hand. Okay, so we'll take a look at the script here. So I've made a function called hand tracking, which is going to do that hand tracking for you. Uh, just make sure you have the Unity Engine XR library and a reference to the left and right hand. So these are objects in the game. That's not the actual controller, um, this left and right hand. Okay, so we take the position here. Now we want the position of the overall controller object, which is this right here, that transform.position. Um, the second one here is the actual controller's position inside the game world. But the problem is if you're moving around, um, you might move away from where your controllers are in the game world. So you want those to follow you around. So you need the two vectors, the overall controller vector, and you need the local vector. If you're just standing still in the game and you never move around in room scale, this other one might work. But you're usually going to want the two. Okay, so input tracking, get local position, and an XR node, that's the actual hardware. So you can track different stuff here. Uh, there's like the head, the eye tracking, if you have that. Uh, but we're just going to go with left hand. So that knows that it's a Oculus Rift controller, and it's the left one. And then we're going to do the same for the right hand. So we're going to set the position equal to the overall position plus the local position. And then we do the same with the rotation. So here we just need the rotation, left hand transform rotation equals get local rotation and the rotation of that controller. So fairly simple there. Um, just put it all in that function and then put the function in update. And whatever two objects you have here, they're gonna follow your controllers. Just make sure that everything is zeroed out. Um, if it starts with an offset, it'll probably be offset in the game while you're moving around. Okay, so now we're going to move over to the inputs. So input works the same as mouse and keyboard. You're still using the input .get button down system, um, as long as the, sorry, as well as the axes under project settings. So just project settings input, and we're still using these axes. So that's what I'm going to set up next. Uh, just keep in mind there's two different types of these you're going to have to do. There's a button, which is going to look like that. And there is an axis, which is going to look like that. So in one, you're, you're uh, labeling the positive button. And you're setting that to key or mouse button. And for an axis, you're going to actually go down here and do joystick axis. And then you're going to select which one it is. So keep that in mind. There's two different methods. If you're doing a button, you're going to name it. If you're doing an axis, you got to go through the drop down menu. So to find all those codes, you're going to go over to Unity's documentation. And it's good to start with the, um, the image here. So let's say we want to do the X, which is what I've done for this example. You're going to find the uh, image on the controller right here. So they've called that button 3. And then you go into the chart and you find button 3. So here you got all the uh, information. You got the interaction type, the ID. Uh, the range, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so you find button 3. And interaction type is what it's doing. So if you're just resting your finger on the controller or if you're actually pressing that button down. 
So you can see which, um, which things will kind of do that detection and all that stuff. So for the X button, which is also called button three, uh, the ID is number two if we want to press it down. And if our finger is just resting on it, then it's going to be ID number 12. So I've set up two different, um, two different inputs for that. So I've done X as one, I've just called it X as the name, and I've called the second X touch. So this first one is going to be if your finger is just rest, or sorry, if your finger is pressing it down, and the second one is going to be if your finger is resting on it. So we go to the axes, X, this is when it's pressed, and that's the syntax here. Under positive button, for name you can call it whatever you want, I've just called it X. But for positive button, that's what matters. It's got to be joystick, space button, space, whatever the ID is. So in this case, it's two, which on our chart is right here, which is the X being pressed. And that's pretty much it for all the buttons. Um, keep in mind, a button is just a Boolean. So if you're resting your thumb on something, that's considered a button too. Like the, that little thumb rest, even though you can't physically press it, it's set up the same way as a button. Um, if you're pressing in the analog stick, that's a button. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, for the axes as well. If you're just resting your thumb on that, that's considered a button. Um, so that's how it's set up. And now we'll go to the second one, which is setting up an axis. So let's go to the, uh, the primary hand trigger here. That's that one there that you squeeze in. So that's going to go from a value of 0 to 1. Uh, let's find that in the chart. So it's called Axis 1D Primary Hand Trigger. Quite a mouthful. Axis 1D Primary Hand Trigger. There it is there. So that one can be squeezed, and I think it has a... Oh, maybe that one doesn't have a near touch. Yeah, I think that one can just be squeezed in. Uh, so here you're going to grab the ID again. Um, but it's the axis ID, not the button ID now. So that one's going to be 11. And also here you can see what it goes from as a value. But we want that 11. And we're going to go, uh, so I've called it left palm squeeze. And so you don't need anything here in the buttons. Make sure you select joystick axis. And that's the number 11. So we go down here, axis ID 11. Select that, and it should be good to go. Uh, just the sensitivity, make sure you bring that down to one. It starts out at a thousand, and it won't really detect. Um, it won't detect the trigger at a thousand. It's got to be lowered right down. So that's a one D axis. That only goes in or out. You also have the analogs though, uh, the analog sticks. So these ones up here, the left and the right. Those you can set up to two different, the uh, the forward and back, and the left and right. So each one of those is going to go from negative one to positive one. Uh, so stuff like movement or camera rotation. Um, that would be the same as a mouse. So your mouse can go up, down, left, right, but it can kind of go in between as well. So it, it's it's logging those values. Um, and that one's, it's really the same. Axis 2D primary. Find it down here. Thumbstick, horizontal movement, so that's the left and the right. It's ID number one. Uh, these ones are a little different um, since it's the first. Uh, it's Technically it's number one, but if you go in here and you set up the left stick horizontal, uh, it's called x-axis. So just imagine it starts out one, two, three. Um, so button ID one is actually the x. And then for the second one, left stick vertical, so forward and back. Um, again, just changing that sensitivity, joystick axis, and that's ID number two, but here it's called Y. And then if we move over to the right stick, it'll go back to the regular, uh, so this stick here, it'll go back to regular naming convention. Um, oops, clicking all over the place here. Axis two dairy, secondary thumb stick. Okay, so the horizontal movement, it's just a matter of finding it in the chart. So it's ID number four, and you can select number four here. 
So that's how you set up the buttons and the axes. And from there, you should be good to go. Just make sure you've enabled VR in the player settings right there. And then make sure your device is set up. It should just automatically show up. Make sure it's the one on top. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.